Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, and let's talk horror. Now, today I'm going to do something I've never done before, and I'm going to do a deep dive into a video game, and that is Silent Hill 4 The Room. Now, I love this video game, and playing it with my son when he was a kid, this is a game that genuinely scared him, and it gave me the creeps as well. So I'm going to be giving you pretty much every plot point to this game. I'm going to be talking about some of the alternate endings, some of my favorite bosses to fight, some of my favorite villains in the game as well. So before I start, I got to give a huge shout out to the Silent Hill Wiki for helping me to create this script, because this is a lot to take in. So let's get started. We start with an amazing title scroll. living in South Ashfield, a city that's a half day's drive from Silent Hill. Uh, he's content with his life, living in room 302 of his apartment complex, but one day he finds himself mysteriously locked in this room. It's padlocked and chained from the inside. He can't escape through the windows. Like I said, even his front door is chained. No one, not even people standing directly outside of the door can hear him. He pounds, he screams, he cries, he tries every day to get out. He cannot get out of this room. At one point, we see his next door neighbor, Eileen Galvin, walking outside. She ends up becoming a pretty important part of the story. Uh, we also see that there's a peephole between his room 302 and her room 303, which is pretty creepy. But we also get a pink bunny sighting. So people that are fans of Silent Hill, that's a little Easter egg for all of us. Um, even with the key, the superintendent, Frank Sunderland, he cannot open 302. Um, Eileen, she's been very concerned about him. She's noticed his absence, but she doesn't really know him too well. But after five days of being trapped, Henry finds a hole has opened up in his bathroom wall. Uh, he takes a steel pipe. He goes into the hole, hoping for a way to get out of like this hellish madness. But he ends up going into a variety of other worlds. The hole leads to strange areas inhabited by dangerous and sometimes immortal creatures. Um, some of my favorites are pers personally, I like the nurses. I call them the burping nurses because every time you hit these nurses, they let out a weird burping sound. <laughs> And the creepiest ones to me were these two-headed baby-looking creatures. Um, not too hard to beat, but they are just very, very creepy-looking every time that you see them. Um, so, like I said, he's going to all these different areas. He's able to travel between worlds through this hole, and it resembles like a halo of the sun. Every time he travels back to his apartment, he finds himself waking up in his own bed. So, it's almost like he's been dreaming all of these things the whole time, and it really does become more of a nightmare than anything. But whenever he witnesses murders in the other world, those murders also happen in the real world. One of them being Cynthia Velasquez. Um, we meet her down in the subway and she thinks that this is her dream. And uh, she's a very likable character. And then you travel together with her only to find out later that she has been killed on the train. And Henry sees in the real world her being taken up. Um, and put, put in the back of an ambulance. Um, we also have Jasper, Andrew, Richard. All of these people that are dying in the other realms are dying in our world as well. So um, as Henry investigates further, he learns more about Walter Sullivan. Uh, he was a serial killer who terrorized Ashfield several years ago and left numbers carved into all of his victims. And all these new victims also have numbers all carved into them. Um, Walter was eventually arrested and unlived himself soon after. However, these new victims, like I said, they're all carved, everybody, and it matches Walter. And everything that happens after this, it's almost like Walter has come back as a ghost. Um, we even have them talk about a copycat. Looks like another one, Captain. Got one, one, two, one on his head. It's just like that case from 10 years ago. Yeah, that Walter Sullivan case. But Sullivan's dead. They even got the body. Must be some crazy copycat. So when Walter was a baby, his parents abandoned him at birth. 
Um, he found his way to an orphanage, the Wish House Orphanage, in the woods outside of Silent Hill, where he was taught occult rituals and teachings of the Order. Um, he began to believe that Room 302 itself was his mother, and as an adult, he decided to awaken his mother by purifying her through the 21 Sacraments ritual. Um, now, that required 21 murders. Walter killed 10 people in different ways, and he ended each murder by taking their hearts out. Afterwards, he performed the ritual of holy assumption, which allowed him to make himself the 11th victim through taking his own life and still remain in his own manifested world. So you get to this moment where it's just absolute terrifying. And throughout the game, you see not only adult Walter, but you see little Walter as a child as well. Are you Walter Sullivan? That's what everybody calls me, but I don't really have a name or a home either. Well, what about a mom or dad? Yeah, but I never met them. They left South Ashfield Heights right after I was born. But soon I'll get to see my mom. Do you know where she is now? Yeah, of course. Right where I was born. Lots of people tried to stop me, but it's fine now. It says in the scriptures that I'll be with her. I gotta hurry. Mom's waiting. And you don't know when you first see this child. You think he's just an innocent child, but as one of our victims are dying, he lets us know the truth. <laughs> Now, the four victims that we've already seen, um, those are victims 16 through 19. And Walter's other worlds, Henry also meets, like I said, the two versions of him. Um, after exploring Walter's first four other worlds, Henry arrives at the fifth. And what that is, is an alternate South Ashfield Heights. Um, he sees Walter knocking on Eileen's door, and after finding a key that unlocks Eileen's room, Hen he witnesses her bleeding to death on the floor. And you see that she's reaching out for little Walter. So at this point, you think that maybe little Walter may have had something to do with it as well. Um, following her death, he wakes up in room 302 and notices an ambulance on the way to the hospital. In his apartment, he notices hauntings invading from the other world. They're coming out of the walls, trying to get him. Um, he creates a new hole in his laundry room, which leads to St. Jerome's Hospital's other world. In this, he sees Eileen, like just a huge version of her head. And I don't know why, but this always creeped me out so bad. Just seeing this big old head of her and the eyes follow every time that you move. Um, he does discover Eileen alive in one of the rooms, and she does have a pretty bad freak out. they decide to stay together um, and try to find a way out of Walter's world. Henry takes Eileen to a halo of the sun. However, he realizes that he's the only one that's able to see them. At one point, he goes and Eileen's like, you just disappeared. I didn't see a hole. I didn't see where you went. Um, but eventually she starts to tell him about Joseph Schreiber. Um, it was 302's previous resident. He disappeared six months before Henry moved in. So they decide to go down to the deepest part of Henry's world. Um, they're trying to find the ultimate truth. Uh, after leaving the hospital, they find themselves at the top of a spiral staircase. Each of the strange objects, such as human limbs and shadowy figures, are trying to grab at you as you're going up and down these stairs. But it is important because each of these other worlds are all connected by the staircase. Um, they must ascend it in order, like I said, to find the ultimate truth. The other worlds are the same as before, except a few paths that were blocked are now accessible, and each victim is now a ghost that could be deadly to Henry's health. Like, you see um, the guy that had set himself on fire. Now he's a boss up in the sky, and you have to battle this fire boss, and it's, it's a great boss. It's one of my favorite bosses in the game. 
Um, and this was Jasper. We talked about him at the beginning. Um, he also realizes that Walter Sullivan is following them. And there's one point where you see Walter come up to the door and he just stares into the peephole. This is another scene that I really, really love. Um, in the third Underworld, he finds Andrew DeSalvo, who is shirtless and must be pinned down with a sword of obedience to continue. Now, a lot of these ghouls can't be destroyed or killed. You have to pin them down with a sword of obedience, and that way they can't move on any farther. Um, now, we also find Richard Braintree, who has the ability to teleport. And Walter Sullivan, at this point, he kidnaps his younger self. I'm going to see my mom. Stay out of my way. Who are you, anyway? My name's Walter. Walter Sullivan. It's time to complete the 21 sacraments. But that's my name. And what are the 21 sacraments? Don't worry. You'll know soon enough. Well, let's go and see Mother. Let me go, that hurts. So after defeating the One Truth, Henry and Eileen reach the bottom of the spiral staircase and find a dark abyss into 302 of the past. So this is the 302 in the past. Um, a memory of Joseph Schreiber's, Henry and Eileen meet him in room 302 of the past. He appears as a statue in the ceiling and he tells them about the 21 sacraments. It's him! You've done well to make it this far. Let me tell you something about him. Walter Sullivan. When he was a little boy, he began to believe that my apartment was actually his birth mother. He decided to free her from the stains and corruption of this world. At the orphanage, he learned of the 21 sacraments, the only way to purify her. He then performed the ceremony of the Holy Assumption and created this twisted world. Now, he's become nothing more than an inhuman killing machine. Well, He's dead now, but he's still trying to complete the 21 sacraments. His boyhood desire to return to the bosom of his birth has divided him. Now his child self has manifested itself in this world, and soon He's planning to finish his work, the 21 sacraments. Number 20, the mother reborn, Eileen Galvin. Number 21, the receiver of wisdom, Henry Townsend. Even now, it may not be too late. Follow the crimson tone. Stop. If not, wherever you are, he will catch you. Find him. His true location. You must be nearby. You must kill him. You must kill him. Kill. 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 Number 20, the mother is born, the crimson. 
crimson cold. Obey the crimson cold. Kill him. Must kill him. Kill 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 So in room 302, Henry is shocked, he's speechless, and he discovers a sealed room that contains Walter Sullivan's crucified corpse. Um, after using the keys that he finds inside of Walter's pockets, he ends up going down even deeper, and he is able to exit out of his front door now. But South Ashfield Heights has also been transformed into this really sickening realm. Eileen then appears in the corridor and they reunite. In the apartment in the other world, Henry examines six hanging corpses. Each one eliminates a chain that is forbidden entry into the supers room. So as you talk to these corpses, they disappear. And then you're able to, once you do all six, go into the superintendent's room. And he has a memory of Walter's father's voice. But when he's in there, he discovers the umbilical cord that Frank had kept for decades in a very, very crazy scene as well. Eileen ends up leaving to go find younger Walter. She knows that they're the only ones that can stop him. When Henry returns to 302, he discovers that Walter's corpse has disappeared. So underneath where his corpse was lies a round black abyss. Henry enters the abyss and comes across a large room with a spiked spinning mechanism in the center with a pool of blood surrounding it. And there's also eight spears and a giant monster resembling a torso in the room. Walter confronts Henry, and we realize that Eileen is possessed and about to walk into this huge mechanism, subconsciously taking her own life. Uh, the final fight of the game takes place. Henry uses Walter's umbilical cord on the monster, allowing him to spear it. Walter then loses his immortality, and Henry defeats him. Now, there's four different endings to this. The first one is escape, and this is the best ending. Uh, Walter falls, falls to the floor. He raises his arms, calling out for his mom before he goes motionless. The room starts to shake and Eileen, still alive, is no longer possessed. She slumps to the ground. Henry calls her name and reaches out to her. Young Walter is knocking on room 302, um, calling for his mom to let him in. Uh, he falls to his knees to the floor. He fades away and the door opens. Um, so you kind of get the feeling that he's back reunited with his mother. Uh, the next day, we find out that Henry visits Eileen in a normal hospital. <laughs> We'll have to find a new place to live, huh? <laughs> now, again, this is considered the best. Um, we also have the death or the ending scene called Mother. Um, it's the exact same as Escape, except for she says, I guess I can go back to South Ashfield Heights. Henry's apartment is shown like it was at the beginning with the rust and the blood and all that. And we see that Eileen may still be possessed. So that's the trick to this ending. For the ending Eileen's death, after Walter falls to the floor, he raises his arms calling out for mom before he goes motionless. The room starts to shake. Everything else happens with young Walter. But after he disappears, the door opens and Henry sits up in his bed once again and hears on the radio to his despair that Eileen has died from her wounds. The woods near Silent Hill, the bodies of five men and women were discovered. 
the police reported that all the murders appeared to be the work of the same perpetrator. They are continuing their investigation. Four of the victims were found dead at the scene, and the fifth victim, a Miss Eileen Galvin, was transported to St. Jerome's Hospital, where she died a short time later. Police say that Miss Galvin's injuries matched exactly those of the other victims. Eileen. Very sad. She and, and you got to let her die in this one. That was a very, that's another part of this one. You have to let her die. You can't save her when she's walking towards the mechanism. Now, 21 Sacraments is the other ending. After Walter falls to the floor, he raises his arms, you know, calling out mom before he goes motionless. Henry stares down at them and suddenly falls to his knees, holding his head in pain. He then stands up as if possessed by Walter. Young Walter then appears in room 302 as it was at the beginning of the game, all bloody and rusty. <laughs> Stay with you forever. And now the news. Yesterday, in Ashfield and the woods near Silent Hill, the bodies of five apparent murder victims and a sixth severely wounded female were discovered. The woman was immediately rushed to St. Jerome's Hospital, but died a short time later of her injuries. She has been identified as a Miss Eileen Galvin of Ashfield. The last body discovered was found in room 302 of the South Ashfield Heights Apartments. It is believed to be that of its occupant, Henry Townsend. The body was reportedly disfigured beyond recognition, making identification impossible. Uh, so there's a couple different endings to this that are very dark, too. Um, so like I said, I didn't get every single plot point covered, but this is definitely, in my opinion, one of the darkest games. Very sad, very scary easily my favorite silent hill game so if you guys haven't played it like i said please go back and revisit this game it's a lot of fun in playstation xbox pc somebody please give us a great update to this game but let me know down in the comments guys what do you think of silent hill for the room what is your favorite silent hill game would silent hill for the room be a movie that you would like to see or do you think it would work better as a limited series so we can maybe get like 10 episodes and be able to explore each of the other worlds as well as going really deep into Henry and Walter and young Walter as well. I would love to know what you guys think. If you haven't already, guys, please like and subscribe. It helps to build the channel more than you know. And follow Sledgehammer Horror on social media. Our links are in the description as well. But until next time, keep talking horror, stay what you are, and we'll see you guys soon.